In this video, we're going to be looking at the Brain Creative Synth plugin. It looked interesting and it was on sale, so I thought I'd give it a try. The plugin's main appeal is that you can create a new patch at any time using its randomized feature. Let's try it out. Here's a few more interesting sounds I've found. It claims that it uses a unique algorithm called XYDNA to generate its patches. Its website claims that this algorithm is unique and therefore, I would assume, produces better results than pure randomization. From my experience with making a randomizer, this seems to be true. However, not every new patch is good, so you may have to keep trying. As a synth, it's pretty basic, but it's not intended to be a full-featured synth. Its feature set is comparable to an old-school analog synth, but without the analog sound. I'll explain more on this later. The synth has two oscillators with a few basic waveforms, sine, triangle, saw, square, and noise. There is a mix slider between the two oscillators, as well as basic unison controls. We have an amplitude envelope, a filter envelope, a filter LFO, and a pitch LFO. You have a few master effects such as reverb, delay, distortion, lo-fi degradation, filtering, and stereo width. This synth is designed for simplicity, not for flexibility and endless customization. There is also a virtual keyboard with pitch and mod wheels, as well as glide. There is a monophonic polyphonic switch to the upper right of the keyboard. It comes with a set of factory presets, as well as the ability to save your own patches. The patches you make are saved in such a way that they're easy to share with others. It also has support for automation, which is essential, and support for MIDI routing options, which is great for adding expressiveness through MIDI controllers. Limitations aside, you don't get a tool like this for the synth features, you get it for the randomization. You don't want infinite configurability in a tool designed for one-click randomization. It would become very complex very quickly, and the sound would suffer. Let's demo this by deconstructing a sound it generates. First, let's remove the effects. Turn the reverb and delay all the way down. Go to the oscillator tab. Here, we see two oscillators. The first thing I see is that the mix slider is almost all the way to oscillator B, meaning that oscillator A is barely used. Oscillator B is a saw wave pitched up an octave. Let's adjust the octave setting to make sure it's affecting the sound. It is, so we're on the right track. It's also slightly detuned. Since oscillator A is barely used, I should probably remove this. Let's adjust oscillator A to see if it affects the sound. Adjusting the mix slider lets me confirm that it does work. It's just not adding to the sound. You can see that some unison is being used. We have six voices with a detuning of 0.1. If you adjust it, you can hear how it affects the sound. We have a pretty standard amplitude envelope. The sound has a relatively quick attack, moderate decay, a very low sustain, and a little bit of release. Go to the Edit tab to see the filter and modulation. We have a filter envelope modulating the cutoff of a filter with some resonance, which is what causes the wah sound. You can adjust the filter's Q slider, where Q stands for quality, to adjust the amount of resonance. Turning off the filter envelope removes the wah sound, and now we're hearing the pluck sound we'd expect from the amplitude envelope. The slower attack is what causes a sound and removes the pluckiness. This envelope has a slow decay, but it doesn't matter because the amplitude envelope's low sustain kills the sound quickly. You can see a tiny animated drawing of the filter envelope above the controls. Both LFOs are off. Let's turn them on and see how that would affect the sound. We can adjust the frequency of the pitch LFO 
but I'm not seeing a way to reduce its intensity, so it only seems useful for special effects. If you want a more subtle vibrato, it looks like you need to use the mod wheel, which produces a vibrato effect. It's a little intense, so you'll probably keep it at a low level. The filter LFO can add quite a bit of motion to the sound. In both LFOs, you only have a few waveforms to choose from. I'll turn up the amplitude envelope sustain so that you can hear the effect better. You can sync the filter LFO rate to your tempo or let it run free. Like the pitch LFO, I'm not finding a way to reduce the amount of LFO applied to the sound. Here's what the different waveforms sound like for the pitch LFO. Here's what they sound like together. Let's turn off the LFOs and look at the effects. It has a reverb where you can configure the mix amount, and it has a slider called Room. It has a stereo delay effect with a knob for the mix amount and delay time control. The color knob is my favorite, and it can really change the tone of your sound. The sugar knob controls the amount of distortion. The website calls it a special algorithm distortion. The lo-fi knob adds some lo-fi style degradation to the sound. To me, it sounds like a bit crusher. The filter knob controls the cutoff of a filter that has an adjustable Q factor. You can switch between high pass and low pass filtering by clicking on the curve next to the filter label. The width knob adds a little bit of stereo width to the sound. It comes with a number of factory presets. I don't care much for them for the style of music I'm interested in, but I've saved a few patches of interesting sounds I've come across. Here are a few of them. I found that in Ableton, most, if not all, the controls were automatically mapped to my MIDI controller. I noticed that if you right-click on a parameter, you find a Learn MIDI CC feature. You also have the ability to manually assign a MIDI CC number. I was unable to get this to work, but this may be due to a problem on my end. Since all of the parameters are accessible through Ableton, I could always just remap them in Ableton. Earlier, I mentioned that it does not have the analog sound, and here's what I mean by this. Old analog circuitry had imperfections in it. The oscillators weren't pure, the pitches weren't perfectly in tune, and various components were affected by the circuitry available at the time. However, this ended up adding to the sound a warmth that gives analog sense its characteristic sought-after sound. Analog-style software synthesizers try to emulate the circuitry to reproduce these imperfections. To demonstrate this, let's look at a pure sine wave under a spectrum analyzer. Here's a tone played using Serum, which has very clean digital oscillators. A perfect sine wave should appear as a single peak, but you can't make a perfect sine wave in practice. 
You can see small bits of other frequencies, but the volume level is very, very low compared to the main peak, meaning you have a super clean sound. Now here's the same tone played using Brain. Here's what the two of them look like on top of each other, with their volumes matched. You'll notice that the Brain oscillator is not as clean as Serum's oscillator, but those are hard to beat, and the volume level of the extra frequencies is still very low. Now here's what it looks like compared to Ableton's analog instrument. You see a lot of harmonics, but this isn't a bad thing, these create the analog sound. What we learn here is that Brain's oscillators aren't as clean as Serum's, but they aren't analog either. However, Brain never claimed to be either of these. It does have a few quirks. I'd recommend turning off the Brain animation because it runs smoother with it off. I've also seen a bug where the waveforms disappear from the LFO interface, but it's not difficult to bring it back. I don't see myself using this as a synth, like Serum or Vital, but as a creative tool to come up with new ideas and new sounds. Once I find something interesting, I can tweak it and turn it into the sound I'm looking for in my music. If you're wanting something with a set of pre-made, curated sounds that fit well within a specific genre, this is not it, at least for the style of music I'm into. This is for creative inspiration and sound design. It will take some experimentation on your part. In summary, here are a few of the pros I see in this synth. The built-in randomization feature is great. However, not every random patch will sound good. You just have to keep trying. I've seen the same thing when I make my own randomizers. You can save your patches when you find or make interesting ones. The randomized settings are transparent and easy to tweak after randomization. You can see how it configured the sound, meaning you can understand it and reproduce it. This plugin is great for learning how synths work. Press the randomize button, listen to the sound, and see how it works. If you pull up many presets and advanced synths, it can be intimidating with all the modulations and settings, and it's sometimes hard to know where to begin. This synth is much easier to deconstruct. The interface looks decent, it's simple, and it's scalable. You can create some interesting sound effects. It comes with several built-in master effects. I really like the color knob. It has good connectivity with your DAW and MIDI controllers through the use of automatable parameters and MIDI CC control. The automatic MIDI mappings worked well for me, however, I wasn't able to manually reassign it through the plugin itself. Here are a few of the cons that I'm seeing. The waveform selection, modulation options, and filtering are limited. As such, this is not my go-to sense for creating complex sounds with a lot of customization or complex routing. It's a tool for finding new sounds. If you're looking to create a specific sound from scratch, try more powerful scents such as Vital, Serum, Pigments, or Massive. The built-in presets don't really do it for me for the type of music I'm into. There are no built-in macros. However, you can create macros within your DAW, it just won't be as convenient or portable between machines. But in all fairness, this isn't the type of scent that you would use macros on. After a while, many of the sound effects start to sound similar. Overall, I'd say this plugin is worth exploring, especially when it's on sale. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're using Ableton 11 and you're interested in learning how to add randomization to any plugin, instrument, or effect, check out this video. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.